many of you guys know a little bit about my history. Some of you don't. I've been working in this field for 20 years. I've done all kinds of things. And when I say this field, I mean development and growth. This has been my career. And one of the highlights that I've had over the years was I was connected with someone that's pretty famous. His name is Ken Wilber. He's a philosopher. He's an author. He's written 25 books. He's known as a very, very smart intellectual human being that came up with this thing called integral theory. Has anyone heard of this? Has anyone heard of Ken Wilber, heard of integral theory? I'm just curious right now. A couple of hands went up, all right? There's a couple of hands that are like this and that. Um, he's quite famous in some respects, okay? Like Tony Robbins, for example, who is really famous, who's probably the biggest name in this personal growth and development space, considers Ken Wilber his teacher. And when we got in to creating this course with Ken, we reached out to Tony and said, hey, would you be interested in supporting this? And Tony, Tony Robbins wrote me back. He's like, absolutely, anything you want. I'll do anything for Ken. So Ken is like one of those guys that his work and his philosophy is kind of behind the scenes of a lot of the frameworks, growth frameworks, development frameworks that you see out there. What I wanted to do tonight was talk about one of the most fascinating things that I ever learned from him, because I think it's very useful, especially for right now. And I want you guys to really understand this perspective, because if you can get this, it might help you make some sense of what's got not only going on in the world, but the challenges that we all inevitably experience in our relationships. Okay. What I'm going to share tonight has to do with a way of relating, a way of communicating. And I think that's really relevant right now because that is up in the air for a lot of us. We are having challenges in our communication with others. People's worlds right now are siloed. Belief structures are really clearly drawn right now. Okay. And when we're in this kind of environment of this group, we are trying to break free of that. So that way we can be ultimately connected and authentic with ourselves and have amazing relationships, no matter what the belief systems are. All right. That's what I want to talk about tonight. So integral theory is huge. It's this massive piece of work. There are like volumes and volumes written about this. Okay. It's an academic thing. My nephew is a junior at Princeton University. He's a freaking genius. He is studying spiral dynamics, which is part of integral theory. Okay. He's doing that right now. He's studying anthropology in Princeton and he's studying this stuff in school. Okay. So some of this is academic. And what Ken did, he had a mission to try to, under, to, try to understand, well, how, how do things work? How does the world work? How does our mind work? How do we grow? Is there a way that we can break this down cognitively so we can understand the nature of our own growth with the intention to help us achieve the things that we want, right? I mean, that's really what he was trying to do. He's, he's a scientist. You know, the guy spent two or three years by himself in a room, never leaving. You know, he's a very unique individual to be around. He has a very mad scientist energy. I got to spend 100 hours in his loft in Denver with him. I probably interviewed him more than anyone on the planet. And my approach was I, I went up to him with my, my partners at the time and I said, look, we want to take integral theory and make it usable. We want to find out what the most important things are about this grand theory that people seem to love all over the world that's being used in institutions and governments and try to bring it and knock it down to usable pieces of information and practices that guys like you and me can use to better ourselves. That's what I said to him. And he looked at me like thought I was crazy. He's like, all right, let's do it. So that was the nature of what I did with Ken. Okay, I approached him and uh, he said yes. And then I got to spend a hundred hours with this guy, three different trips, three weeks. I went there. It was very organized. I have a lot of funny stories, brothers, you know, that I, that I would love to tell you um, about it. It was quite comical at times. Ken is a really interesting human. It was a really uh, beautiful part of my life. And integral theory, and I'm going to do my best right now to summarize what integral is, and then we're going to go right into one piece of it, okay? There are five core components to integral theory, okay? I'm going to just name them. And what they are are lenses. They're perspectives on how we grow. The name of them are levels or stages, types, uh, lines, quadrants, and states. Okay, those are the five core components of integral theory. So it's a very elegant, simple thing. And those things that I just said, they're just words right now, I'm gonna fill in with some color in a moment, are just lenses that we can look at our lives, okay? And out of the five, what I'm gonna talk about today are levels or stages of development. And this is really pertinent to understanding what's happening in the world today. Right. Ken's been talking a lot about this in his own world right now. I've been watching it. 
And levels or stages of development means that we can look historically at history, human history, and see that there are certain epochs of time where certain major belief systems are in play across humanity, okay? And these epochs are called stages, and you can actually see them historically, and you can actually watch when they spiral or when they leap to different stages, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example, okay? Please put the five stages in the chat. There's actually seven or eight stages, you know, to the total development of integral theory, okay? And there's a lot of information on this, guys. Like if you start Googling this, you're gonna go down rabbit holes that are crazy. I want you to really try to stay here with me because I did spend a lot of hours with this guy and I'm probably in some weird way uh, equipped as well as anyone to try to summarize this stuff in a way that can, I can cover in 10 or 15 minutes. You know, covering integral theory, you know, in 10 or 15 minutes is really hard. But these stages or levels of development can be seen through history. I'm going to give you an example, okay, to make it real. For a large time period in our history, religion was the major kind of belief structure and identifier with what had power on the cultural or global scale, right? The church was really powerful in our culture all over the world. And that stage or epic lasted several hundred years until it started to become unhealthy, started to break down, power began to get abused. And in that transition, which lasted for 50 to 100 years, a new belief structure, a new way of operating in the world was birthed out of that. This is how the stages or levels work, okay? Something comes in, it serves its purpose, it lives, it breathes, it kind of organizes human culture in whatever way it does, and it runs through its own course, it starts to die off, it starts to kind of feed on itself and become negative, and that forces a new level or a new stage to be birthed. This makes sense. This is how we're born. It's the same process of life and birth, life and death. Okay. So in the 16 and 1700s, the seeds of this new next level were introduced. And this next level is what we would call the modern era, which is marked by science, democracy, analytical reasoning. Okay. If you look at history, the Renaissance, okay, was the birth of this new modern world. And it solved a lot of the problems that the religious mainstay was causing. Okay, science came in. Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, they all happened at around the same time. And if you look, look throughout history, you'll notice that during these transitions, all the famous people that we know historically were there in like these moments in time. Okay, so there was an explosion of a new way of thinking, a new way of being on the planet in the 16 and 1700s Art exploded, creativity exploded, right? Like all this amazing stuff happened. Leonardo da Vinci, like, like so much stuff happened during this time frame, all right? And this was the birth of democracy. This is when America came to be. It's not coincidence. America came, this is the land of the free. They came here and they started a new government, a government for the people, right? Where democracy, the will of a larger group of people was what was in control. I mean, how interesting is that? We, it's hard for us to understand, but before that happened, a different kind of governance was the mainstay, and that's just what people were used to. But America kind of came in and caused something new. That's why the, the energy of America is so beautiful, because at its core, it represented a new way of being in the world. All right, It was a shift, a new level, a new stage of development for our human species. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, I don't know if you ever thought about it that way, but when you really start studying spiral dynamics or integral theory, you start to see that these stages, you can really see them and there's values associated with them. I mean, this is very, very well mapped out. The next stage that we've experienced, because there's a later stage, happened around the 1960s. And there were seeds of this previously, of course, but in the 1960s was the first time that humanity in general started to realize that we're all on this planet, that we're all part of the same system right? Like the, we got to save the earth. The whole green movement was born out of the idea that, oh my God, like we're all in this together. We're all part of the same thing. The whole globalization movement really happened in our minds all across the world at around the same time. It's hard for us to realize that, but if we were living in the 1920s, our mindset wouldn't have been as global as it is today. Okay. We don't often have the ability to see 
that our mindset and the way that we think about things is a direct result of the evolution of our time, of our space. Okay. So that's what happens. So these stages run in these big epics. And the coolest thing that I learned from integral theory is that when you talk about the stages or levels, they're not just about the history of our human culture. The same exact stages happen in our own individual lives. Okay. The seven or eight stages that you can look at, you know, in terms of the epics in human history also happen starting at birth for us. It's similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay? That's another framework, a way of looking at it. And when I started to see how the mapping worked, that the way that we grow as individuals is mapped directly to how we grow as a culture, it was shocking. But at the same time, it's so freaking obvious because culture is made up of us. We make up culture. We make up society. We make up the way that this works. So it's kind of like this connection and this bridge into understanding something that in one sense, it's pretty goddamn obvious, right? So I invite you to, to think and explore more about spiral dynamics, the levels of development, but that's not the point of this talk right here. The point of this talk is to get to the juice, the thing that is most exciting, that holds the most hope about the integral levels of development, okay? And it's the next stage, the one after the green movement or what they call green, which is the integral level of development. So there is a next stage in human thinking. And Ken, when he talks about this, when he teaches it, shares that this next stage, okay, away from orange or democracy and science, and then green, which is kind of like we're all in this together, the next stage integral is not just a shift in stage, it's, it's a major shift. It, it's like a, a fundamental shift in the way that we orient to the world. And when I learned this, it changed a lot of things in me. And I'm going to share this with you right now because the next stage in development for our human mind is one by which we understand and can see the totality of the map before us. We understand that we're just part of this process. And in that awareness, we can understand that all the stages, all the belief structures that exist up until that point all have value. There's truth in all of it. So let me say this a different way. And the way that Ken talks about this is that when you look at the concept of war on planet earth and battle and like people that really disagree, it's not the people that are fighting. It's the level of development that they represent that are fighting. Okay. So the beliefs that we see out there running rampant in the world all fall under these certain buckets of development. And it's really the battle of the different belief structures that are at war with each other. It's not the individuals, okay? And this is important to understand because at the integral level of development, you can start to see and observe from a witness standpoint, the totality of this process and understanding that all the different levels have value. There's truth there. And what the value of this is for me was the understanding that if there was somebody or a group that I didn't agree with, right? And I was wondering what the hell are they doing? Which is really big right now in our world today, right? There's, a, there's a, a big polarity in our world today where people can't understand how the other sides are operating, right? This is very prevalent. At Integral, we can look at it and understand that no matter what this, these people are doing or believing, to them, it's true, right? To them, it's real. At the integral level of development, there is an ownership of truth, okay? Truth is dependent on where that person or group lives in relationship to themselves, okay? This is really fundamental to understand that truth itself in integral theory is subjective, okay? I want to share that because we're in this planet right now. And these guys are coming into this group and we're sharing and we're growing together. And yet, you know, we got a lot of wars going on on this planet. And right now we have, you know, real chaos and real tension. And the invitation of understanding this is to look at your own belief systems and look at the belief systems of those that you love and care about, whether they agree with your way or not. And to start to understand that at, at the integral level of this next layer, it's all okay. The way that Ken says it is that 
you'll always know an integral person that's really vibrating at that level. Cause when they walk into a room, they're best friends with everybody. They don't fight and they don't fight because there's an inherent understanding that everybody's holding truth according to their own means. Very, very powerful lesson. Now it's the kind of thing that we talk about and we can understand it. And it's important to talk about it intellectually, isn't it? We need to talk about this stuff. So that way we get it. Like this is a process of actually saying it and understanding it, but to actually embody that is practice to actually embody. This is work to walk the planet with this higher level of development where you're really just never making anyone else wrong. That's the problem is we just tend to make everyone else wrong and we silo ourselves in our little own world of belief that we believe to be so true and that everyone else should believe that thing or that way. And it's a hard pill to swallow because at that point, you'll still feel tension when you see things happening in the world that are against your moral compass, your moral beliefs. And so there's a path of understanding and just being aware that, okay, you got to learn. We have to learn how to actually be okay with the differing ways and the differing beliefs. Guys, for me, this was like a, a transformational moment in my life when I really understood this, okay? That the way that we operate, the way that we orient towards things and stimuli goes through a very predictable process. And this process is one by which human beings can actually achieve a certain level of awareness by which we understand that everything that exists all holds some truth to it that no one is independently right and independently wrong. Sorry, universally right or universally wrong. What would that mean for you if you could walk the planet with the understanding and the energy that you weren't universally right? You just have your own way of orienting. And that no matter what you see out there, there's some truth and reasons why they believe what they believe. That's healing. That's understanding. That's empathy. But not empathy just by opening your heart, empathy from the understanding that, hey, we all are doing our best and we're all just where we're at. Absolutely life transforming to understand these levels of development. Now, the last thing that I'll share, and then we're going to go into groups, is that the way that integral theory and spiral dynamics works and how these leaps happen in our culture and in our own lives is also scientifically kind of like been examined. And what they say, and you guys might have heard of this in some different ways, is that when 10% of the global population starts adopting the new stage, the new structure, the new kind of set of beliefs that represent the new stage, then very quickly, the rest of the world automatically starts acting that way. Okay? So you can imagine that in the 1500s, the seeds for the next evolution of mind was happening already, but it wasn't until the 1600s and 1700s that enough people, enough humans were resonating with this new way of being where the world started to change and we started to see major changes on the planet. I really believe, and so do many, that we are in one of those leaps right now towards this integral way of being where we're understanding that everything holds truth. And that's a fundamental foundational shift in how we orient. It will end war on the planet as we know it. It doesn't mean that we'll be living in euphoria. Because I asked Ken, I'm like, well, what does it mean? Like, is everything just going to be so great? We're just going to be like all floating on cloud nine, accepting and loving each other? And absolutely not. There's still going to be problems. We're still human. There's still going to be things. But as a culture, we will get to the point where we'll learn that something like war doesn't make much sense. I mean, oftentimes I think to myself and I ask Ken this, I'm like, you know, let's say you had aliens that were watching us, you know, from some advanced culture and they were watching us. What would they say about us sending out people to kill other people as part of, you know, some warful machine, right? I mean, just think about it that way. So to me, integral and this awareness and this knowledge holds the seeds for some real transcendent change. And I invite you to ask me more questions around this to research it yourself. I have a lot of information on this. Like I said, I spend a lot of time with Ken. Um, it's really, really beautiful work. And the last thing that I'll share on it is that what we do here, when we do these programs, whether you're in the six day challenge or in the, the other programs, Tuesday tribes, or however you're engaged here, 
we are saying yes to accelerating and amplifying our own growth. And that was the big question that I had for Ken. It's like, well, this awareness is great, but how do we, how do we amplify it? And everything that we do here is doing that work, is amplifying it, okay? So we are on an accelerated path. That's why I really believe we're kind of representing, and it's not just us. There's a lot of other groups out there. We are trailblazers. We are trailblazers for men that are creating a new and more evolved way of acting as mature men on this planet. And I'm like a huge freaking yes to that, right? We need that. We all want that, not only for the world and like what's going on socially and politically, but for our own lives, for our families, you know, for our own, our own stuff, our own purpose. So you guys are in the right place.